Michael, the digital Swiss Five is broadcasting on Flow Bikes for viewers in the US and Canada starting Wednesday, April 22nd. I can tell you're stoked. You have your Swiss mountain hat on. I'm stoked too, but you know I'm a neophyte and I still have like a set of wooden rollers that I ride on. What is virtual bike racing and what the heck is the digital Swiss Five? Okay, yeah, my heart rate is up right now because I'm excited for this race. And I think that you will be too once you um, once you come around to the 21st century, Ian. This is a five-day stage race that is happening on the cycling virtual cycling platform called Ruvi. Now, where Ruvi uh, differs from uh, a Zwift like many U.S. Uh, riders are more familiar with, Ruvi is all about photorealistic backdrops. They will plant you in a virtual world that looks quite like the uh, real thing. So they have Furka Pass, for example, uh, the legendary pass with the like Wes Anderson Hotel in Switzerland uh, going up it. So we're going to see really, really realistic images of Switzerland throughout this entire five day stage race. Riders, uh, I, I've just pulled up the tech guide. There's some interesting uh, bits of information in here. Riders, they have to weigh in at the start of every stage. They're taking uh, the power to weight number very seriously as they should because that is essentially uh, determines how fast you go when you are virtually riding. Riders are allowed to choose from four trainer options. They are all smart trainers. They can either use an elite trainer, a tax, a Wahoo, or a Saris Cyclops. Um, and yeah, what else would you like to know? Um, well, I've been doing a little bit of research here on my own. I see that there are five stages a variety of terrain really like we would have in any stage race. Um, we don't have the actual uh, profiles of these stages yet, but we do know the length of each stage and the altitude um, stages range and length from stage one, which is only 26.6 kilometers long to the longest stage, which is stage two at 46 kilometers long. So relatively short stages. Um, our, our broadcast is daily from 10 a.m. Central to 1130 a.m. So if you don't like, like I know you don't, watching a seven hour long bike race um, and you want short, punchy, exciting races, these are the basically professional riders riding a criterium virtually. Um, but some big climbing days, the altitude ranges from you know, the, the less, least climbing day, I should say, is only 180 meters, essentially a flat stage, we would imagine for the sprinters. But stage three, 1,500 meters of altitude over 33 kilometers goes over the Newfoundland Pass. This is almost 5,000 feet of climbing in 20 miles. Yes, stage three is certifiably the queen stage of the digital Swiss five. And it's going to be problematic for a lot of riders. I think a lot of riders haven't done much virtual racing. We saw Michael Matthews come out of the virtual tour of Flanders with an issue. The uh, virtual Swiss race is it's going to be a little bit more friendly to the riders. Uh, teams can interchange their riders every stage. So Sunweb may not choose to start Michael Matthews on stage three, this Queens uh, climbing stage, even though he is on the roster, we are going to see Michael Matthews at some point during it, but they may just be saving him for stage two, which is the, th the sprint stage. I think that this is pretty cool because you're going to be able to see riders really just compete in their element every stage. And, you know, stage three, we're going to see a battle of the climbers in the virtual world. Yeah. And I think that, is a neat and interesting thing. I don't think that there would be a lot of like cumulative fatigue day to day in an hour long race. So uh, an interesting new format for stage racing. Um, let's get into what teams are competing. 16 world tour teams, two uh, professional continental teams and the Swiss national team. Uh, we have the, we don't have the full rosters yet, but we do know the teams are competing essentially every world tour team, except for UAE team Emirates and Astana. Yeah. I'm not sure what Astana is doing. I think that UAE team Emirates is still locked in a hotel room. I, you, you may have been the last person to have contact with them at the UAE tour. I feel so bad for those, uh, yeah. guys, but yeah, not, not sure, uh, why Astana isn't jumping in here, but yeah, every world tour team, except for those two are going to be in attendance. This is going to be a really big showdown. And 
you know, all of these riders, they're just itching to race. The teams are itching to have media exposure. And this is going to be the biggest thing of the uh, month. And hopefully more races are able to kind of pivot and get themselves on a virtual platform uh, until the real world racing comes back. But for now, this is a really big thing for the entire cycling world to look forward to. The Tour of Flanders did it. I would say it was a huge success and I am looking forward to five days in a row of it in Switzerland. Let's talk about some of the big stars that we're going to see on the start line. Julian Alaphilippe, I think, is probably the biggest name starting alongside Vincenzo Nibali, Mads Pedersen. Uh, who else are we looking at? Yeah, it is uh, going to be a pretty star-studded field. Uh, as you said, Vincenzo Nibali and Alaphilippe are two of the uh, biggest names. I've got my start list somewhere around here, but um, I've, I've lost I'll my you start list at the end. Yeah, tell me. Yeah, Primoz Roglic is going to be there. Um, Americans, Ben King, and Sepp Kuss. I think we'll all be looking at Sepp Kuss on the Newfoundland Pass stage. Um, Dakuna Quickstep is also bringing Zunek Stibar. And you can only imagine that uh, teams will be bringing when we get the full rosters announced, we'll see more stars lining up. But the names we have right now, this is going to be a, a star-studded race, essentially. Yeah, and it's going to be really interesting because we're going to see different sides of riders. You know, we know Julian Alphilippe is fantastic at attacking, reading races, and going downhill quite fast, same as Nibley. This is going to be an opportunity to just really see where they stand from a fitness perspective because a lot of those real-world elements are going to be taken out of the equation and you know how is julian alphilippe going to go up a mountain versus primos roglic without any attacking without any descents i don't know we're, we're about to find out though well i think as well as team tactics dakuna quickstep did not do very well in the virtual tour of flanders um and greg van avermatt finally got his Flanders win. I don't think anyone would have picked Ben Avermatt for the favorite in that race. So it's going to be exciting. I uh, can't wait. Again, tune in on Flow Bikes, April 22nd, 10 a.m. Central, viewers in the U.S. and Canada. Um, see you there. Yeah, see you in Switzerland, virtually, of course. <laughs>